Number one, a set of kitchen containers can be stacked to save space. The height of a stack is given by the expression 1.5C plus 7.6, where C is the number of containers. So it wants us to find the height of eight containers. So we're just going to plug eight in for C. So we'll do 1.5 times eight plus 7.6, and you can just type that into your calculator. 1.5 times eight is 12, and then we'll add that 7.6, and we end up with 19.6 for the height of eight containers. Then it says a tower made of all the containers is 40.6 centimeters tall. How many containers are there in the set? So this means we wanna work this backwards. So you'll see here, remember I multiplied first and then I added 7.6. So to go backwards, we will subtract 7.6 first and that gives us 33. Then we will divide by the 1.5 and that will give us 22 containers in the full set. So then part C says, Noah looks at the equation and says that 7.6 must be the height of a single container. Do you agree with him? Explain your reasoning. So your reasoning could be um, different here. You could use this equation to plug in one container so if he's saying that's the height of one container, then we should be able to plug one in and get 7.6. And if we do that, we can see we won't get one point or 7.6 because we'll get 1.5 plus 7.6. So we'll get 9.1 as the height of quote unquote one container in this problem if we like plugged that in, right? And so that's not really true. The height of one container is actually this part. It's just 1.5. This is what's changing based on the number of containers is this 1.5 number. So it's 1.5 times the containers because 1.5 is the height of a container. And so if we plug in um, zero containers, we actually get that the the height that they're being put at must be 7.6. So 7.6 is just the containers are being stacked on top of <clears throat> something that's 7.6 feet tall. So this is not true. And again, you can have other justifications for this, but that's just a couple. Number two, select all values of X that are solutions to this equation. So here we see two numbers being multiplied together that equals zero. So we see this number times this number equals zero. So in order to get numbers to multiply by each other to equal zero, that means we know that one of the numbers had to have been zero. So one solution is that this part is equal to zero. So I can just set that equal to zero, add five to both sides, and we know that x equals five is a solution. And I can find that down here at f. Then the other option is that this portion was equal to zero. So seven x minus 21 um, is equal to zero. So then we could add 21 to both sides and we get seven x equals 21 divide by seven and we find out that x equals three is the other solution and we see that down here at e and then those are the only two solutions so none of the rest of these work so that's one way you could have done it by just solving um, for each factor being zero you could have also plugged every single one of these into the equation to see if they equal out to zero that's another option Number three, the expression 30x squared minus 105x minus 60 and at 5x minus 20 times 6x plus 3 define the same function. So these are equivalent expressions. Um, which expression makes it easier to find f of zero? Explain your reasoning. So this is where you're going to plug in zero and evaluate. And neither one of these is particularly difficult to plug in zero, but this one is easier because you're doing something times the x value, something times the x value. 
And anytime we multiply by zero, we know that that equals zero. So when we do 30 times zero squared minus 105 times zero minus 60, we know that this will be zero and this will be zero. So when we plug in zero, we just get negative 60, that constant number back, um, which then is the answer to part B. So F of zero is negative 60 and it's easy, in my opinion, easy because you're, you end up multiplying um, by zero. So both of these first terms will just be zero. Then for C, it says which expression makes it easier to find the values of X that make F of X equal zero, a true solution. And so in this one, it's easier to have it in this form because then we know, just like we did in the um, in number in the last problem, um, that if we multiply two numbers together to equal zero, we know that one of these numbers had to be zero. That's the only way to get a product of zero is if one of them is zero. So then we know 5x minus 20 has to equal zero or 6x plus 3 would equal zero. And those are our only two solutions. If you're plugging into this one, you're just guessing and checking and trying to come up with it. And there, it, it's not really super obvious here. And it's going to take you a while potentially to figure out what numbers work. So then down here, we would just say 5x minus 20 equals zero. We would add 20 to both sides. And then you would divide by five and end up with x equals four as one of your solutions. And then you can do 6x plus 3 equals 0. So we would subtract 3 to both sides. And then you would divide by 6. So then you would get x equals, and you can simplify this fraction to be negative 1 half, or you could put negative 0 0.5. So either one of those is fine. Number four, a band is traveling to a new city to perform a concert. The revenue from their ticket sales is a function of the ticket price, and the ticket price is X, and it can be modeled by this function. What are the ticket prices at which the band would make no money at all? So this means that this equation or this expression, if they're making no money, would equal zero. Okay, so this gives out the revenue. If the revenue is equal to zero, what ticket costs does this happen? And so then we would set X minus six equal to zero and we would get X equals six. There's gonna be no money made there. And then 250 minus two X equals zero. I'm gonna add two X to both sides. So then I get 250 equals two X divide by two and we would get X equals 125. So I would say, so if we're looking at this, right? So if we're looking at the revenues here, um, right? We've got six and then we've got 125. So between those values, we're going to be making money, okay? This equation is going to look something like this between those values. So anything less than six and more than 125 is not going to produce, well, you'd actually be losing revenue at the end of those, okay? So Depends on how you read this. It says making no money at all. So does that mean just zero dollars or does it mean that you're actually losing money also? So these are the values that you literally make zero dollars less than six and greater than 125 is where you would be losing money. Number five, two students built a small rocket from a kit and attached an altimeter, which is a device to record the altitude or the height of the rocket. They record the height of the rocket over time since it's launched in the table based on the data from the altimeter. So here's the time and then the height. And the time is in seconds, the height is in meters. Function H gives the height in meters of a function, um, in meters as a function of time in seconds. What is the value of H of three? Okay, so H of three, if we plug in three, we get back 236.25. Then it says what value of T gives a height of 252. So we see 252 right here. And the time that gives that is four seconds. 
and then explain why h of 0 and h of 8 are the same. So h of 0 and h of 8 both produce a height of 0. So why, you know, why would that be true? So this is where the rocket, the rocket is launching from 0, right? It's launching from the ground, then it gets launched up into the air, and then it comes back down, right? So it's going to start on the ground, and then it's going to end on the ground. So it's the starting and ending, okay? So it starts at a height of 0 and ends at a height of 0. or on the ground, right? So height of zero means on the ground. And then based on the data, which equation about the function could be true? That h of two equals 189 or that h of 189 equals two? Remember this input needs to be the time. Okay, so we're looking at, would it make sense for the rocket to be at a height of 189 after two seconds or a height of two after 189 seconds. And so the one that makes sense here would be this one, okay? Because in between here would be 189. After eight seconds, it's at zero. So 189 seconds would be way out and it'd just be sitting on the ground. So it's already hit the ground after eight seconds. It's definitely not gonna be back at two feet after 189 seconds. Number six, the screen of a tablet has dimensions eight inches by five inches. The border around the screen has a thickness of X. Write an expression for the total area of the tablet, including the frame. So to do the area, we need to take the length times the width, right? So let's take a look at this length down here. So here's the part with the frame that's eight inches. Then we, or sorry, just the picture. Then the frame over here has a thickness of X inches and X inches. So the whole length of that piece right there, right, of this whole piece is going to be 8 plus 2 X's. So that's the length or the width of the picture and the frame. And then we'll look at doing this again um, for this part. Okay, so if we call this the height, right, from here to here, it's going to be 5. And then the thickness of the frame on either end is x. So here to here and here to here is x. So then that height is 5 plus 2x. So then this would be the expression for the total area of the tablet. Then it wants us to write an equation for which our expression is equal to 50.3125. So you're just going to take this exact same expression here. And you're just going to set it equal to that number that they gave you. So then they're saying, okay, well, this area is equal to 50.3125 um, inches squared. And so now it says, try to find a solution to the equation. So you're just, you know, taking a stab in the dark and trying to figure out um, a solution. And they say it might help you to think about tablets that you've seen to think about how wide the border might actually be. Now, don't get confused here because you can't just set these equal to zero because this is not equal to zero. OK, so these two numbers need to multiply to 50.3125. So maybe you start with a number um, like one. Maybe you're saying, let's check if the border is one inch. So we're going to do eight times eight plus two times one, and then five plus two times one, and see what that equals. So two times one is two. So eight plus two is 10. Five plus two is seven. So this is giving us 70 inches squared. That's bigger than 50. So now I'm going to want to change this number to be smaller because I know the border is not one that makes it too big. So maybe I'll just cut that in half. So I'll do 8 plus 2 times um, 1 half. And then 5 plus 2 times 1 half. 
So half of two is one. So this is really eight plus one for the width. And then half of two again is one. So then it's five plus one for the width, which is six. So we're doing nine times six, which is 54. So that's closer to this area, but still too much. So then you can keep guessing um, based on the information that keeps happening here. So then you could do, you know, eight plus two times 0.25 and then five plus two times 0.25 if we have a quarter inch border. And um, so if you get that, then this, this part is 5.5. And then this part would be 8.5. And this gives us 46.75. So now we're lower than the area that we wanted to be. So then that's telling us that our next guess should be somewhere between one half and one quarter. Okay, so one half is 0.5, one quarter is 0.25. So then you could try... Um, like right in the middle of that is 0.375. So you could plug that in. And then when you multiply, so you're plugging it in for the border width, right? So then 5 plus 2 times 0 0.375. And when you multiply this out, this one does give you the correct answer of 50.325 once you do that. But you're just guessing, plugging in some decimals, and then checking that output area just to see. So like I said, this one was too big, so I reduced the border width, okay? That reduced my area, reduced it again because this was still too big, and then this was too small. So then I know that the border is between 0.5 and 0.25 inches. Number seven, here are a few pairs of positive numbers whose sum is 15. The pair of numbers that have a sum of 15 and will produce the largest product is not shown. Find that pair of numbers. So one plus 14 is 15, and when we multiply, we get an area of 14. Three and 12 is 15 when added. Three times 12 is 36, that's larger. So if you remember when you did this, the way that you get the largest product Okay, is when these numbers are closest together or really the same. So if we took 15, the sum that they need to get to, and we divided it by 2, we would get 7.5. So 7.5 plus 7.5 is 15. And when we multiply 7.5 and 7.5, we get 56.25. That's going to be the largest. Number 8. A kilometer is a measurement in the metric system, while a mile is a measurement in the customary system. One kilometer equals approximately 0.621 miles. The number of miles is a function of the number of kilometers. What equation can be written to represent this function? So I like to take what they wrote here. So they said one kilometer equals 0.621 miles. So however many miles we have um, is going to be, we're going to multiply that by 0.621 to figure out the kilometers. So if we have the number of miles as a function of kilometers, what equation can be written? So miles we're going to take and divide by 0.621, okay, to solve this. So we get m by itself. So the miles is going to be the kilometers divided by 0. Um, 0.621. And the kilometers is going to be the miles times 0. 0.621. And then how are these functions related to each other? They are inverses of each other.